Registered Phenomena Code 202 Object Class Alpha White Explained Additional Properties Extradimensional Containment Protocols The original RPC-202 documents are to be stored within standard high-value item containment, accessible only with clearance from the Site Director. Copies of RPC-202 may be distributed by the head researcher. Description: RPC-202 is the collective designation for five paper documents, originating from the alternate reality ALTR-C44X. The documents manifested within Site-044, each appearing in different places throughout the facility. An eyewitness described one of these events as, quote, a sudden flash of blue light, lasting only a few seconds. Everything then returned to normal, except a piece of paper was now on the floor. The documents were collected and analyzed. Through the use of an anderson eckerd coherency test, it was deduced that upon discovery, the documents had a coherency level of approximately 4.67. However, over the course of several days, this coherency decreased until RPC-202 reached an equilibrium with that of our own reality at 3.97. RPC-202 are otherwise non-anomalous. The contents of RPC-202 consist of various log entries, a video transcription, a report from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and a printed letter written by a researcher of an authority equivalent within ALTR-C44X. Each document in some way relates to a Zeta-7 baseline coherency disturbance scenario in which a significant disruption in the Anderson constant occurred. A transcription of each RPC-202 document is available below. Document RPC-202-1 These log entries came printed on a single sheet of paper, no preface given. Log Entry 1 Over the last few days, we have gotten reports from authority researchers specializing in the study of ACS levels that there has been some kind of shift in the baseline coherency level. Study into this will begin shortly. Log Entry 2 We have been able to verify that there has been some kind of coherency shift. We are not yet certain as to its magnitude, or the area it affects. This warrants extensive study. Log Entry 3 There is a noticeable change in the circulation of air particles. Weather patterns have become easier to track and predict. It seems that there is simply more information that can be obtained through standard weather observation devices. Log Entry 4 After extensive testing, we have discerned that the entirety of the planet has increased by an ACS level of 0.1. The sheer scope of this change is incredibly unnerving. We have also been able to detect differences and fluctuations of coherency within different regions. Some locations appear to have increased in coherency by a higher degree, or are continuing to increase despite most regions having ceased at this point. As of yet, we have not been able to discern any possible cause for the coherency abnormalities. Log Entry 5 We were wrong in our assumption that most regions have ceased their increase in coherency level. It seems that the baseline coherency level of most of the planet, if not all of it, is increasing at a rate of 0.1 every three months. Currently, we are at a baseline coherency level of 4.2, the original level being roughly 3.97. Log Entry 6 We've noticed several locations have increased in coherency by extreme amounts. A small town in Oregon was observed to have increased from a coherency of 4.21 to 4.73 over the course of three days. The residents of the town evacuated, traveling to a nearby town. However, none of them were still alive after two weeks. They had all developed mental derangement. The majority of the subjects died due to suicide. An investigation team equipped with perception-dampening suiting was sent to the location. One member described the town as, quote, incredibly formation-dense, as if I could pick out the tiniest of detail with ease. I recall seeing an abandoned newspaper stand and read every single headline within only a few seconds, unquote. 
The team did not suffer any lasting effects following the investigation. Log Entry 7 The baseline coherency of most regions have reached 4.3. Changes in our reality caused by the rise in coherency have become apparent. The world seems to make more sense now. It is much easier to understand things without human fallacies getting in the way. Furthermore, information in general has become more noticeable. Little details seem to present themselves. It can feel a bit mentally burdensome at times. Document RPC-202-2 Head Researcher Gerso I'd like to formally request a transfer from the project. As much as I want to help you in this, I can't keep going. It's too painful. Handling these high-coherency objects is made my mind hazy. I fear that I am on the verge of crossing over a threshold my mind becoming unstable. I've been seeing things out of the corners of my eyes. Eldritch beasts lurking over my shoulders, gone the moment I turned my head. One day after work, I was walking along the street to my car before feeling something behind me. I turned my head slightly to the left, trying to discreetly see what was there. I saw a tall, featureless figure, a faceless head with gray wrinkled skin just above my shoulder. I kept my composure and continued to walk. It followed with steps in sync with my own, always staying at exactly the same distance behind me. It emanated a deep, static-like noise. I could feel my heart throbbing in my chest. After what felt like an eternity, I reached my car. I opened the car door, stepped inside and closed it. As I prepared to drive, I kept my eyes away from the entity. It pressed its head up to the side window just close enough without touching the glass. As I drove away, I saw it in my side view mirror. It stood there with its head pointed towards me, as if it had eyes to see me. I impulsively turned my head to look at it with my own eyes, and it was gone. The scary part is I don't think I was hallucinating, I think it was real. These things were always there, but I did not have the capacity to comprehend them. I hope that my mind can return to ease if I leave the project now. I can only hope. Dr. Bentham Document RPC-202-3 Log Entry 8 The Coherency Department of Site-099, our primary lunar base, has alerted us that they have detected minor abnormalities in coherency levels as well. They will be performing an extended diagnostic test in order to determine the full extent of these abnormalities. A request to the International Space Station to perform similar testing has also been made. Log Entry 9 We have received test results from Site-099 and the ISS. After reviewing the notes, we can conclude that coherency disturbances are not localized to Earth. Document RPC-202-4 Notice. This is an official report from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA, informing the authority of abnormal signals being received from the Voyager 1 space probe. Over the last seven days, transmissions suggest fluctuations in the behavior of electromagnetic radiation emanating from the Sun. Through extensive study and analysis of the data, we have determined that the Voyager 1 probe, the Sun, and several planets are increasing in coherency suggesting that the scope of this coherency shift extends far beyond the Earth. Furthermore, the Voyager 1 probe is increasing in coherency at exactly the same rate as the Earth. Assuming there is a natural falloff, this would imply that either the affected area of space is extremely vast, at least the size of the Milky Way galaxy, or that the entire universe is the subject of this coherency shift. In any case, it is extremely probable that the cause of this coherency shift is extraterrestrial in nature. Document RPC-202-5 Transcription D-332 Note, Site-066 and an approximate 30 km radius of area surrounding it have been compromised, having increased the coherency level from 4.4 to 5.2. A single video and audio feed was recovered from an on-site security camera situated within the hallway opposite of Research Block B. The event lasted roughly 34 minutes. Begin Log 0 seconds to 35 seconds 
No apparent deviation from baseline coherency. Researchers are visible traversing the hallway as normal. 35 seconds to 2 minutes 12 seconds. There are minor fluctuations in the lighting of the hallway. The edges of shadows within the room become clearer. Although somewhat contradictory, they remain at the same level of blurriness. 2 minutes 12 seconds to 4 minutes 55 seconds. The walls of the hallway begin to change in texture, seeming to become more detailed. Minor crevices and extrusions become more apparent, despite not changing in physical form. A researcher passing through the hallway is noticeably uneasy. 4 minutes 55 seconds to 8 minutes 32 seconds. All surfaces within the hallway become more and more enhanced over several minutes. The audio feed becomes more coherent. Individual sounds become more individually identifiable. Audio originating from nearby rooms within the site are becoming noticeable. 8 minutes 32 seconds to 12 minutes 11 seconds. A low rustling can be heard, believed to be ambient noise within the facility. In the distance, the sound of a copy machine whirring can be heard in vivid detail. Muffled discussion between researchers in different rooms is audible, slowly becoming more coherent until each conversation can be heard. These conversations, footsteps, writing on paper, breathing, and a multitude of other minuscule noises can all be heard and understood individually in an excruciating detail despite being overlapped within one audio feed. 12 minutes 11 seconds to 12 minutes 45 seconds. The hallway appears vivid. Microscopic cracks in the floor tiles of the room are striking. A slight vibration in the lens of the camera, caused by the flow of air through the facility, is indisputable. This substantial, growing amount of information is disturbing and discomforting. Audio throughout the entire facility is now apparent. Outside the facility is the sound of grass swaying through the wind, leaves falling from trees, birds flapping their wings, beetles burrowing into the dirt water trickling down small streams, the rubbing together of individual particles of dirt, each pebble, grain of sand, fleck of dust, thousands, millions, billions of minuscule items, each sensed and understood. 12 minutes 45 seconds to 13 minutes 5 seconds. Personnel within the facility leave their rooms and enter the hallway. Every movement, every muscle twitch, every breath taken, clothes folding, Skin stretching, skin creasing, every insignificant amount of hair and fingernail growth, the pulse of each person's heartbeat through the blood vessels in their eyes, flexing of ligaments and tendons, every minimal jitter and pupil dilation, all revealing in tremendous distinction the intense, inconceivable distress, confusion, and immense suffering each person is experiencing. My senses are engulfed, never ending. Individual bacterium traversing elegantly through space. Organelles processing proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates in beautiful symphony. 13 minutes 5 seconds to 21 minutes 2 seconds. Pain screaming is heard throughout the facility. Every annotation and undulation. I hear a pistol being loaded on the opposite side of the building. The entire scene comprehensible and full. A man breathes chaotically fingers locking as he puts the gun to his head. He pulls the trigger. A series of interlocking mechanical components move, interwoven in perfect harmony, as gunpowder ignites and a bullet is released, entering the man's head through the bottom of his jaw, passing through layers of bone, skin, and brain matter, before exiting through the back of his head. He falls to the ground, a thousand individual drops of blood hitting the wall converging into a thick, uniform substance as it trails down to the floor, congealing at the bottom. A woman steps in the pool of liquid while running towards the nearest exit. She trips, plummeting towards the floor before reflexively extending her arms to the ground. She pushes herself back up and continues, reaching the exit and escaping to outside the facility. After several minutes of running, she falls to the ground, unable to escape her own mind. The vibration of every single molecule, atom, and elementary particle, an uncountable, vast field of information, filling the pores of my mind. It doesn't end. An everlasting waterfall invading my thoughts. 
it never ends. A web of organized chaos. Pure, unadulterated static, growing louder, louder, ever louder. It overwhelms me. I think, but I do not hear my own thoughts. Time is not a concept. I type, but I do not feel my own fingers. I… I can't. There's nothing to hold on to. I'm drowning in the confines of my own mind. Please. I beg. I can't. Please. End log. Note, Researcher Maillard, the person responsible for transcribing his log, has entered a comatose state following his observing of the camera and audio feeds. Attempting to continue the transcription for the remaining ten minutes of recording had been disallowed. None of the individuals present within the facility were able to survive the event. The ones that did not commit suicide died due to significant brain damage caused by the rupturing of blood vessels and extreme swelling. Addendum. Through extended analysis of the original RPC-202 documents, traces of a reality signature have been found. By corroborating these traces, a complete signature has been obtained, allowing the authority to locate ALTR-C44X. Mobile Specialized Team Uniform 1, through God's Eyes, an MST specialized in missions relating to objects and environments of very high or low coherency, was tasked with entering and investigating ALTR-C44X. The team entered equipped with coherency-stabilizing suiting, capable of maintaining a safe internal coherency. A recording of the investigation was created, using filtered cameras and microphones that simplify a high-coherency input into a baseline coherency output. This recording is transcribed below. Investigation Log Investigation Log 202.1 Date Team Mobile Specialized Team Uniform 1 Through God's Eyes Captain U-1 Cap Inglo Members U-1-1 Burikov U-1-2 Mbibwe Forward Due to the complication of cross-universal travel, Uniform 1 did not have a line of communication with Site Command during the investigation. U-1-2 came equipped with an Anderson Eckhart coherent U-1-2 came equipped with an Anderson Eckhart coherency reader, AECR and a reality signature module capable of determining the exact location of RPC-202's origin. Begin Log Uniform-1 enters into a dense urban environment. It is very quiet, only the sound of a soft wind audible on the recording. There are no humans immediately visible, living or not. The carcasses of squirrels and other small animals are scattered across the road and sidewalk. Dozens of stationary, abandoned vehicles are in the road. Vines and other flora cover the buildings. Video and audio feeds have minor irregularities caused by the high coherency level and simplification filters. Tall grass sprouting out of cracks in the concrete pavement appears to sway in the wind in an unnatural fashion, moving in disjointed clusters that do not resemble realistic wind patterns. The sky appears to flicker between a soft blue and a slightly greener hue. The team verifies that all equipment and recording devices are functional before beginning with the mission. First things first, U-1-2, we need an ACS reading and a geographic location. U-1-2 unfolds an AECR and places it on the ground. After a moment, it releases a flash of light. U-1-2 looks at its display before recompacting it. The coherency level is somewhere between 5 and 6. That's as accurate as I could get. Also, this is New York City. I don't need to run a test for that. I used to live in NYC. This is pretty crazy. Highest coherency environment I've been in. Everything looks like... Plastic? That's not even close to describing it with words, but it's the best I got. Another thing. What direction is the point of origin for the reality signature? It's, uh, northish from here. Going along this road should get us there. We've got a few blocks up to go. The team travels along the road for several minutes, before stopping to investigate a human corpse inside of a small eatery. 
U-11. Enter the building and report anything of note. U-11 walks into the room. There is a single body resting on the inside of a booth. The corpse is partially decomposed. Dried blood is visible in streaks flowing from the ears, eyes, and nostrils, pulling on the table. There is blood dripping out of his orifices. Probably died due to coherency rise. Other than that, nothing of note here. Let's move on. Uniform 1 travels for roughly four minutes before reaching an intersection. The approximate destination. This should be about it. Strange. There's nothing here. Wait. I've been here before. What? How? Well, not here here. I've been to this place at our home dimension. The entrance to Site 044 is right around here. Site 044? Isn't that where the 202 docks came into our universe? Yeah. It's a subterranean site? It should be about a kilometer right below us. I know the facility like the back of my hand. I used to be stationed here on the ASF. That was a few years ago. It would definitely be great if you could help with navigation. But certainly there could have been some renovating since you left the ASF. Knowing the authority, probably not. Fucking bureaucrats. Heh, <laughs> nice. So, where's the entrance? In there, there are stairs that go from the top to the bottom of the building. At the bottom of the stairwell, there's a keypad locked door into Site 044. They change the code every few weeks, so I wouldn't know. We'll have to bust in. There's probably no one left alive in there to stop us anyway. Uniform 1 travels into the office building, entering a lounge area. It is barren with no signs of life. There is no electricity throughout the building. The stairwell is visible beside an open elevator shaft. The team travels down the stairwell, reaching an unmarked metal door with a keypad. The door is slightly open, a viscous blue liquid covering the door frame, locking it in place. The door is already open. Everyone stand back. U-11 investigate. U-1-1 approaches the door and examines the liquid. It seems to vibrate very slightly, oscillating back and forth at a minuscule degree. It is otherwise inert. Probably residue from something that left the facility. Seems harmless. Uniform 1 passed through the doorway into an entrance lobby. At the center is a receptionist's desk with a computer and several stacks of papers. There is a single doorway on the left side of the room, leading into the rest of the facility. The blue liquid is seen trailing from the entrance doorway, along the wall and into an air vent. After checking the area for threats, the team investigate the reception desk. The computer does not have electricity. The papers do not have any valuable information on them. You want to. What direction is the reality signature origin? It seems to be several meters below us. The facility has two floors. We'll need to travel through a hallway or two. Alright. U-11, guide us as we go. The team travel through the doorway into a lengthy hallway. They travel to the end in a triangular formation, look into each adjacent room. The majority of them are basic research labs without anything of note. Within the second to last room on the left, the body of an unidentified male researcher lay on the floor, a bullet wound in his skull. Blood and gore is splattered across the floor. A gun is visible beside his right hand. Once at the end of the hallway, Uniform 1 reaches a flight of stairs. As they descend to the next floor, a noise is heard, the low rumble of an unidentifiable entity pacing back and forth, speaking to itself in a low, unintelligible murmur. As the team continue and reach the bottom of the stairs, the noise grows louder. At the bottom of the stairs of the hallway similar to the first except with thick steel doors. There are ten doors in total, five on each side of the hallway. Three of these doors have small glass windows. The rumbling noise seems to be originating from the room on the right side of the very end of the hallway. No other noises are audible. The unknown blue liquid is visible dripping from a ventilation grill in the corner of the room. However, none of Uniform 1 notice. Uniform 1 approaches the end of the hallway, checking each door as they travel. 
Within the first room on the left is the corpse of a pale woman with a small infant's doll in her hands. The room is labeled RPC-480. The first room on the right does not have a window and does not have a label. As the team continue, the sound becomes more audible. It is the sound of an unknown human male walking in circles within the chamber, mumbling to himself. The second room on the left contains four large wooden crates filled with assorted bottles of vibrantly colored liquids. The room is labeled RPC-909. The second room on the right does not have a window. The room is labeled RPC-126. Uniform 1 have approached close enough to make out some of what the person is saying. No. No, I can't. It isn't right. I need to think. <laughs> the third room on the left does not have a window, and does not have a label. Within the third room on the right is the corpse of a male researcher who died of unclear causes. His hands are on the back of his head having pulled a hair from his scalp. At the center of the room is a large metal box, characters strewn across the floor. The room is labeled RPC-599. How long has it been? I keep losing count. How many days? It must be at least thirty. Less than a year? I don't… How long was that? The fourth room on the left does not have a window. The room does not have a label. The fourth room on the right does not have a window. The room is labeled RPC-130. Inside the last room on the left is a large vintage slot machine with the words Lucky Louie's Casino Customs printed in bright letters at the top. The machine's display shows three reels, each of the bright number seven. The door to this room was left open, unlike the rest of the rooms. The room is labeled RPC-777. The right room has no window and is unlabeled. The sound is originating from this room. I don't know. What do I even do? I just, uh, I just don't. How much food do I have left? I need to check. What if it's low? Okay. Okay, it's not low. But what if it was? I need to know what would I do if it was. It will be eventually. I need to know what to do. What will I do? What will I do? What, what will I do? What will I do? That's the question. I need an answer. There's no one here to answer it. I need someone to answer it. I have to answer it. But what is the answer? I don't know. What's the answer? What is it? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know. I just don't. U1 Cap motions to U12 to check the reality signature module. He does, and points at the doorway, signifying that the origin is directly within the room. Oh shit. What if I'm low on water? I need to check. I can't be low on water. Not now, not now. Okay. I'm not low on water. I'm not. I have enough water. I have enough food. I'm not low on water. U1 Cap signals U1 2 and U1 1 to stand back as he carefully approaches the door, not making a sound. He puts his hand on the door handle and attempts to open the door, but a large object is blocking the door from being opened. Hello? Hello, is, some, is someone there? U1 Cap remains silent. My mind's playing tricks on me again. Why does it do this? Why? Why? I'm paranoid, Garso. Shut the fuck up. You're paranoid. L listen to yourself. Fuck, 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 fuck. The man stops talking for a brief moment. No, 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 no. My mind is not playing tricks on me. No, I refuse to believe. Hello? Is someone there? Spawn. Damn it. P please. Please. I've been here for so long. I can't take it. Please, they have to be here. They have to have gotten my message. It's the only way. Hello? What? What? Are you real or are you just a figment of my mind? Why does my mind do this? Why? 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 I assure you, 
I am real. We received your message. Holy fuck! Shit, fuck! Actually fucking work? Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. I have something. I have something for this. I have a suit. Sir, please calm down. I need you to explain to me who you are and everything you know. No, 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 I can't think. We need to leave. Everything is too clear. I can't take it. I have a suit for this. It will protect me. Just, just take me back with you. My mind needs low coherency. It can't function. The suit protects my mind. Okay, just come out of the room. After several minutes, the chamber door opens. The man is visible inside a suit composed of clunky metal components. Let's fucking go! Listen, we have protocols to follow. Hold on. You're too slow. I'll lead the way. The man sprints out of the facility. God damn it. Uniform 1 follows behind him. Once they reach the surface, U-12 activates the return portal and they travel through. Upon arrival, the unidentified individual is tranquilized. End log. Closing Statement The unknown individual later identified as Dr. Garso, a former authority researcher from ALTR-C44X. Following the investigation, he had been kept in standard humanoid containment for several days before he began to regain mental stability. It is believed that the high coherency environment caused Dr. Garso's hysteria. An interview with Dr. Garso took place. See Interview Log 202.1 Once Uniform 1 returned, the recordings were analyzed and studied. After exiting Site-044, a trail of the unknown blue substance was visible in several locations that had previously not been observed. Seven days following the investigation, a pool of the substance was found at the location of re-entry within our own universe. Analysis of the substance is currently underway. Interview Log 202.1 Interviewed, Dr. Garceau Interviewer, Dr. Richards Forward This is the first formal questioning of Dr. Garceau and the events pertaining to ALTR-C44X. Begin Log First of all, how are you feeling, Dr. Garceau? Like shit. I'm still recovering from everything. My mind's still a bit jittery. I just want to make it through this interview and go back to my quarters. That's alright. Just try to answer every question with as much possible detail as you can. Whatever gets me through this interview. So, could you provide a general overview as to explain in the circumstances surrounding your home universe and that of RPC-202? Am I safe to work under the assumption that you've read all of the documents I sent through? Uh, yes. Mm, I don't know where to start. My head's all over the place. Would it be alright if I asked some specific questions? Yeah, that should be fine. Let's see. What caused the coherency shift described in the 202 documents? We never even came close to finding a cause. <laughs> The only thing we could deduce was that it was too abrupt to be a natural force of the universe, at least not entirely. My theory is that something caused a disturbance, which then caused the entire universe to be unstable. The universe then shredded towards some form of stability, which I suppose would be a higher coherency level for some reason. Not really sure why that would be more stable, but Dr. Bentham coined the term ACS entropy to describe the phenomena. Of course, this is all just theory. Is this the same Dr. Bentham that had sent the letter from one of the 202 documents? Oh, I forgot I sent that with the other documents. Yes, him. Could you explain what role he played in these events? Dr. Garso. I'm sorry. He was very important to me. I I don't know what happened to him. I can only assume the worst. Why was he important to you? He was the closest thing to family I had. He's my lab assistant in title, but 
was practically my equal. I see. I'd like to move on to a different topic. Perfectly understandable. We can return to this at a later time. Thank you. How were you able to send the RPC-202 documents over to our reality? Long before the coherency shift began, I was the head researcher for Project Portal, an endeavor to research interdimensional travel. That project was a money hole, sucking up a fuck ton of resources. Project Portal was completed in our timeline. That was how we were able to reach you. I was the head researcher for the project. Oh, do I exist within your timeline? Not an... Not anymore, unfortunately. There was a, a tragic accident during the project, Event Zero. I've heard of no event by that name from my timeline, nor do I ever recall anyone with your name. In my timeline, I sadly did not know you very well. You had just joined the project shortly before you were lost. Our timelines must have diverged at some point before that. In my universe, Project Portal was put on a halt indefinitely, and I was transferred to be head researcher of the coherency shift stuff. The authority began to break down due to the rise in coherency. Everyone around me was going insane. I think I have a naturally resistant mind to the effects of a high coherency environment. I considered suicide, but decided against it. I had to do something, anything, whatever could possibly undo the damage. Were you not affected by the coherency shift? Of course I was affected, but not nearly as much as my co-workers. Eventually at least a dozen of them had committed suicide. At that point I focused all my efforts on finding a way to save myself so that I could continue researching the shift. To answer your question. Sending those documents was a last-ditch effort. I would have sent a written note, but it had become impossible for my mind to write a coherent message. After months of failure, I figured my best bet would be to seek help. I was right in assuming that you would be able to reverse engineer a reality signature, but I expected this authority to be a lot more advanced. It seems that you have just as little understanding of the events of my universe as myself. I... I don't know what to do at this point. I think I've lost. I... I simply don't know what to say. If it's alright with you, I'd like to return to my quarters now. I need rest. I think that would be me perfectly fine. Please, have your rest. End log. Closing statement. Following the interview, Dr. Garceau returned to his quarters and attempted to commit suicide through self-strangulation. After approximately 40 seconds, an AFSF member entered the room and intervened. Dr. Garceau was admitted to the medical center for care. Interview Log 202.2 Interviewed Dr. Garceau Interviewer Dr. Richards Forward Following Dr. Garceau's suicide attempt and subsequent time within the medical center, a second interview was held. Begin log. I'm... I'm sorry. Please be at ease, Doctor. I don't think I can. Take a deep breath. <sighs> it's too early to give up now. Why? There's no hope left. This reality was my last chance. And it's nothing like what I was hoping for. It's just the same. What if I told you that this authority, in all of its power and resources, is going to do everything in its capacity to help you? <laughs> I'd call you a liar. I've worked for the authority most of my life. I know how they operate. They wouldn't lift a finger for one man from a reality that doesn't matter to them. There are an infinite amount of alternate realities. Helping one in need would mean having to help them all. They only look out for themselves, which isn't evil. 
it would be unrealistic to do otherwise. Researching the events of your universe is imperative to ensuring the safety of our own. What do you mean? Picture this and think about it. Out of fucking nowhere, with no clear cause, your universe goes straight to hell in only a matter of weeks. Who's to say that this couldn't happen to our universe? As such, we have to study your universe, as in hopes to prevent this from happening within our very own. And with any luck, we may even find a way to save yours in the process. <sighs> You're right. Now I need to ask you something very important. Oh. Go ahead. What do you know about a viscous blue liquid? A what? I know nothing of this. It was found within your universe and came back with Uniform-1. Analysis has come to show that its reality signatures are completely different from that of either reality. God. Could that be it? Please, Doctor. Help us. With your knowledge, you can be a great asset to our research. I have to. This is it. This has to be. End log. Closing statement. Dr. Garceau is now working as a researcher on Project Blue, an operation with the goal to research and study the events of ALTR-C44X and the substance acquired during the investigation.